All right. So we'll jump into lesson 15 yesterday. Yeah. Yes. Hey, is Jacob McCullough with you? No, he's not. Okay. Mom said she was upstairs with Miss Locks. That's why. I was, and I checked with your sister. She said no. Mm -hmm. Let me find out what she might be talking about. No problem. All right. Thanks, son. Yep. All right. So let's jump off with, let's start with some successes that you want to celebrate either from yesterday's lesson or just like what you've noticed since the scholars um, have been here for the month of February. Um... One of the successes I can say is like, um, I don't have to tell them anymore. Like your paragraph, I mean, a paragraph should have more than five sentences. So now they're they're more comfortable with that. They understand that the paragraph should have a beginning, middle, and end. Um, they're not just uh, ran, randomly writing a whole bunch of uh, sentences that make completely no sense. So, so that's they know a, the structures. Yeah, paragraph. they know the structure. Um, they know that it's not acceptable just to give me like one page of work or a couple <laughs> lines. So a lot of them try to like, I guess, base their completion off of like a lot. Okay. And when I, when they do that, I'm able to tell them what to keep and what to take away. So like we're not just writing to be long. We don't yeah. want it to be a page of nothing. I want it to be a couple sentences of worthwhile quality work. Yeah, and then when they have a whole bunch of sentences, it's easier for me to, well, it's easier for them to understand, okay, I can erase this, this doesn't make sense, this doesn't make sense, and I can push this sentence up, and it's able, it's easier for them to um, restructure their work. Um, I think another thing that's been going well, they know how to, well, they're starting to get into the um, habit of automatically um, editing their responses. So um, do something called CUPS, Yep. Um, the capitalization, yep. um, understand the punctuation, spelling. So they kind of, some of them use as like a, kind of like, you know, when you just do PEMDAS and manage, yeah, you put yes. it at the top. So yeah. they, they'll put cups at the top sometimes or cups on the side of paper. And um, they'll just like check it off for themselves. I know um, Aubrey likes to do that. Awesome. Yeah, a lot of celebrations. So we had that you don't have to tell them the needs of a paragraph anymore. They know the basic structures. They know that you're looking for quality work. So if they've written a whole page of stuff, that you're going to go back and look to see what of that stuff that we can actually use. They're starting the habit of editing their own responses, and they're doing that by using cups as their little checklist, which is amazing because that's going to set them up for success in fourth grade when they start using race and all the other acronyms that kind of talk about more the structure. But this is all talking about the grammar and punctuation. Um, I had some lots of glows from your lesson le yesterday number one thing i think you were consistently you have the lesson plan in your hand yeah and you refer to it all the time which is that is the best way there's no way that you can memorize a scripted lesson plan and hit every single point if you don't have it in hand checking off and revising and making sure that you're going back and forth so continue to do that always look over that that's something that you're always doing um it's very easy for me to see exactly what you were doing you were following the lesson plan yeah. to a t um, so their objective was there how doing the setting snapshot. Yeah. Um, I love when I had walked in you already had reviewed what the five senses were on the board and then you were beginning to do the model for it of what scholars were actually be doing in their independent yeah. practice. Um, you gave lots of at bats, you gave turn and talks, you had them making sure if they were not like Miles started describing, I think, hearing. Yeah. And you're like, wait, have you, like, is that something that you've actually heard or is that, are you able to do that? What senses are you actually able to speak to? Um, and then, I think in the plan it says um, what we did set a snapshot before, and some of the things like it's clear like it, it wouldn't make sense like um like a random sense wouldn't make sense to yeah add no because this is a historical so it's a little yeah. different from when they were doing their narrative they could just be like that's when they were like they were creating their own kind of narrative story so it could be lots of smells and things that you taste but you had a good example of how you could taste um, the bridge by the, 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 using the salt, salt water, water air, yeah. and that is awesome. Um, but also grounding them in like, okay, so what have we learned about from the book? A lot of visual, a lot of things that you were able to see and observe. Um, so all that to say, your model was very clear, and it was very evident that the scholars, when they got to work, very minimal talking, lots of pencils writing, I think you had to give like two re redirections. Javaris, yeah. yeah. Oh, my little friend Javaris, yes. Um, and so today I want to focus on, so I'm going to just give you a couple of pushes, some things that we can work on, just like small quick fixes, and then spend the bulk of the time um, talking about your new action step. Okay. Because um, your previous action step was having, um, make sure that you have the exemplar up and sharing that with scholars. You've been doing that the last four times I've yeah. consistently come in and observed you, so we've now moved on to something else. Um, but some things I noticed that are quick fixes, so I noticed when you were writing, right, you're really 
tall <laughs> and the board is really tall and the scholars like Madison and like uh, Cam on this side were having to like crane their neck to try and see what you were writing because you were having them as which is awesome model what they do in message time plus like read the sentence as long as you write it so if you use that small whiteboard okay. and kind of sit next to that I think that would eliminate that problem quickly because um, they wanted to be engaged but if somebody were just working in like why are they sitting like that oh they're just trying to read the board yeah. um, the small whiteboard. and then um, just something small, maybe setting a timer for the papers to be passed out. Brylin loved him to the heart. Yes. He was taking a sweet time. I said, sir, you've got 30 seconds. And he was able to meet that. So that's just something setting quick. Yep, maybe like one minute, set all the papers out. Um, and then the last two points are going to be what we're going to spend the bulk of our time planning and just looking at is to scan and inspect what you're asking them to do before you move on. So providing scholars with a code on their work as you're helping them affirm what they're doing and a code to let them know what they're not doing. So we're gonna be talking about a lot about the aggressive monitoring. Um, and then we're gonna use the rest of the time to actually create your conference schedule for the next two weeks. Um, and then identify the coding systems that you're going to use for scholars to let them know that, hey, Mr. Forty says this is great, I can move on. Or if you give me this code, I know I need to work on this. And then already knowing where scholars can reference in the room to help them support that will be super impactful. Does that sound good to you? Yeah, yeah, because I'm already starting to think of the, um, well, with the code, um, would that be more like a tracker? No, so that's literally like, what are you going to let write on kids' papers to let them know that they're on the right track? So you can get oh, creative, right? Okay. So I know people like to do like a check, a star, okay. like I would get super creative and do something like maybe even if you put like B-U-U, like if you get your red penny, you put B-U-U, that means like, oh, this is college bound work, like I'm ready to go. Or like or just UF, thinking of the yeah. U-F, exactly. I like that idea, I really do. And then that's something that um, we can easily have um, one of our bonners. They could just make it as a chart. If you get a UF or you get a VEU, this means like you're on the right track. You're writing college ready work. You're ready, getting ready for third grade. And then we could think of another symbol to show that, they're to show that if they're not on track. So what it's else? It's going to be hard. Right? Because then they're going to feel like, well, I'm not college bound. Exactly. And that's good. That's you want them to feel like, man, like, okay, I, I want to get college bound. I want to be able to do this. So what's another little quick tool that we could use? Um. I don't want to give them uh, something that's going to uh, discourage them. Mm -hmm. um, so if they're in second grade now, right? So like I'm thinking about like using like maybe the polos, like green, blue, purple, right? Those are all the grades above. So maybe like giving them like an orange, just like an orange dot. Orange represents first grade. Oh my God, I'm in second grade. I'm doing first grade work. No, that's not cool. I'm not on my way to college. Oh, so I'm okay. thinking of something like that. Because something that they were visually quickly always remember, understand. All the kids in second grade know what it was like last year when well, they had I could the do orange photos. Like this on their paper, <clears throat> meaning like they have to grow. I love it. Yes, I love it. Yeah. So it's like a little empty tree with no yeah, leaves. Yeah, like an empty tree. Yeah. Perfect. So they need to keep working, and then once they continue working, then they get the um, VU yes. symbol. Yes. So first steps, and we'll roll this. You can roll this out to them um, maybe tomorrow or Friday. Um, and I will ask Ivana, this is something super easy. They would create two little anchors that could just live in those classrooms and let them know UFVU means you're on the and right I track. Can, um, I'll, do, I'll share it with um, Dump too. Of course, yep, yeah, and then he can do the same thing. He does the real HU versus the fake HU, of course, <laughs> you know, little college rivalry going in there. Um, but all of this is to help you with your labs, right? Because I know we've done like plenty of like um, aggressive monitoring PDs and like what that is. So I know you know the basis of that, mm -hmm. but what is that going to look like in your classroom? So. We have our coding, right? So this will always live now from any time you're giving feedback on their writing. When you're doing your laps, the first thing you, I want you to start doing is just naming what you're looking for. You did it yesterday. Okay. The only difference is you have a clipboard in hand and actually, if you gave a scholar a BU, you would just track that on your first lap. Like I gave this scholar a BU or a UF. If they had that grow, that means on your second lap, those are the kids that you want to go to okay. first. Okay. And just see, okay, did you grow there? Okay, great. Now that you Now you can move on. And then I asked you to bring some of their work today. Mm -hmm. If you just want to pull out real quick, like somebody who mastered it, someone who just like rocked it out, someone who's like, eh, 
you get in there, and then someone like who totally bombed it real quick. All right. <laughs> <laughs> And then we'll talk through like how this is going to influence and how we use and create our um, conferencing schedule. So I could say this is, uh, I'm pretty sure hers is the best if you want to see Okay. Miss Aubrey Allen. Five cents is about the GGB, Golden Gate Bridge. I feel the wind blowing in my face. It looks like the sun is out in some clouds. I hear the worker banging against the bridge. I smell metal and paint. Mm. I taste metal and salt water and paint. The bridge was built in January 3rd. Oh, my dad doesn't want to do that. No. She definitely has some good evidence of how she, she used, because I know the objective was for them to have two sentences when you had yeah. walked around. So that's already like step one, name the lap. So what are you looking for? You clearly said, I'm looking for you to use two of the five sentences in your opening descriptor of your snapshot, right? Because they're getting ready to do like their whole piece and this is just the introduction part of it. Mm -hmm. um, so you did that. So the only difference is now, when you do that, you would have Not this, sure. yeah. right? So it's a different tracker. So it's not just having the kids listed as a name, but more so like thinking about how you want to conference with them, right? So thinking Monday and Tuesday, gone. That's so you let me keep this? Yeah, this okay. is gonna be for you. And then this one is from next week and then I'll send this to you so that you could just always just Change the dates. All right. But ideally, the idea is that you would see at least five kids per day. So if you do five kids a day, it's about 26, 27 kids. It's maybe one or two kids that you may be able to, like, fit into one of your other groups. But thinking about the scholars on Monday, like those high flyers, the kids that you already know that are always doing the right thing, you want to just conference with them first, you could probably give them a little bit more into insight as to what will be going on for the whole week. Like, okay, today we're focused on the snapshot. At my back table, this is what I'm looking for, X, Y, Z. Once you get to this, I'm going to be looking for this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? So you would have these five kids at your back table after you've done your first lap. You go back to them. You got them started. Once you feel like they're in a good place, then you get back up out your seat and do, like, a second lap, and then you would name it. First lap, I was going around looking for your sentence structures. Now I'm looking for you to add two more. Maybe now I'm looking for one complete paragraph whatever that is according to like the lesson, what is the objective for the end of the day. Ideally, one to two laps for second grade would be appropriate. Um, and then making sure that you could make this visible, um, you just project this real quick, or again, we can get a monitor, this could be like a living anchor. Every Monday that you know you're going to see Miles, Gabri, James, Cadence, and Alicia. Whatever the week is, every Monday, those are your five kids, it's almost like having like a little guided reading group, which is a yeah. little writing group. Okay. And then hold that time sacred, right? So like if Javares or if um, Aubrey, if they're raising a hand, you just give them a sign saying like, I'm at my back table. When it's your turn, you would want them to respect it just like it's guided reading. And let them know like, yes, I'm at my back table, but I'm also going to be standing up, going around, looking for whatever it is, naming my laps ahead of time. Do um, I do one group a day? Yep, so one group a day. So there's five kids a day. Okay. And then we can... Um, How long? So this would be during the independent practice. So they would sit back here for the whole, what, uh, 20 minutes, 17 minutes. Um, so once you release them, today's Monday, scholars, find your name. And this is something that, that we could roll out together. Like you just let them know, hey, we're gonna start doing writing conferences just like guided reading. I'm gonna have five kids at the back table. Instead of reading, you're gonna, I'm gonna be helping you with your writing. So it's like a one-on-one -on -one writing conference. And then you can really dive in to see what it is that scholar is truly struggling with. And it's not only just for the struggling scholars, right? We want to make sure that we're meeting the kids wherever they're at. So if it's somebody, let's say Amari's just rocking it out, you can push him a little bit more. Start talking to him a little bit things that we're do that we might start doing in third grade to get him excited so that we're constantly meeting the kids where they're at and pushing them to that next bucket. I like this. Um, and I did the same thing, so I color code everything. I'm a color coder, right? So UF was like orange, red, so that you could just look in a week. All your kids are just sitting right here. Yeah. Um, and I just blocked out those two days because those this week. And I, I set it up again for next week. I should have done that part. Um, but thinking about this gives you a uh, app at every scholar by the end of the week. So not only are you giving your laps, you're getting your daily data, but then you're also digging into the work, going a little bit more into depth of what they're doing. Um, and this is something that you could just sustain for the rest of the year. It does not have to change. Uh, I'm keep it, uh, yeah, forever. yeah. <laughs> I mean, why honest. not? And then like thinking about even next year, like when you, of course, we always get better with time, right? So knowing all this stuff now. This is something that you could roll out trimester one, and this has just become innate. They're just become um, used to you pulling scholars and your management as well. Like when you were circulating, there aren't a thousand kids raising their hands, so they are in a good place where this I think will be very successful. And I'm 
know you will see great gains in the scholar at work because you're giving them individualized attention. And now when I have you at the back, I'm marking your paper all up. I'm not just going to put a tree to grow. I'm not going to put a UFF. Nope. Talking about this sentence. Does this make sense? Did you do your cups? Like, you can go a little bit more in depth with this scholar than you could maybe with the rest of the class. Yeah. Um, it's definitely better because before I was... Um so just like going like pie by pie yep. and then, you know a lot of people be finishing and they be so this will have them understand that they have to wait everybody's going to be working on one general thing yes. but um they'll know that they'll get that that specific time with yes them. And I, that's what they everybody they wants your want. time yeah they do now everybody has this very specific day and god forbid if there's like an on demand one day we can adjust and let them know at the head of the week hey guys we're taking it on demand. This means this is your time to show what you know. So I won't be pulling groups this day, but know that I'll make that time up next week. And just always front load it with them just so that they understand because once they see this, they're going to know Wednesday's my day with Mr. Portis. I want to make sure I'm at that back table. Yeah, I know. And then even thinking about strategically placing the and I, where you have Javaris is like in between those two girls, like he could be doing almost whatever. Those two girls are still going to stay on task and also remind him to stay on task. So just making sure if you would like to think about maybe having him in your groups more than once, just to keep him close to you maybe like or have his desk. Time. Yeah, and that's yeah. fine. Yeah. And that means so like you wouldn't and then you can maybe you could put his hand, name over to the side and let him special know. Special accommodation. Yes, exactly. And then he'll feel like okay, I'm not being overlooked. I'm not being forgotten. He's still meeting with me and meeting my needs because we know that he needs a little bit more attention, which is fine. Um. So. Do you want to go ahead and jump right in? I can yeah. pull up the roster yeah. and we can see, I, um, I'm start actually, placing them right now. I really like this idea. I really do. <clears throat> Let's see. My sister sent the attendance yesterday. I got it on my um, phone. Oh, phone yeah, that's fine. That. And I forgot what homeroom you saw first. I, um, I know I always US. end up going, okay, you that's what I thought. You called me and viewed you before too, but. Music catch me in the US. I'm, I'm trying. I'm sorry. I, I got a new phone yesterday. Oh, congratulations. So, uh, Do you have a 10? Yeah, but I, I didn't want to buy a new phone. <laughs> oh, you had to buy it. No, no, thank you. I ended up having to my other phone. The um the, the chargers that the um kids use, somebody, it was, I mean, it wasn't yeah, their phone. They hooked it up the for me. And then it, um when they took it off, the piece got stuck in the um phone. I couldn't I just, man. Yeah, here we go. Oh no, this is VU. Let me find UF. I don't got UF. Yeah, I have VU only. Let me see. Should be. Oh, what do you. You take snapshots of it? Yeah. <laughs> I love I try, it. I try to be, that's why I got snapshots and Ms. Green was making fun of me because of all my, um, <laughs> my alarms that I got every day. So I don't miss nothing. Oh my yeah. gosh. Starting at 5 a.m. all the way. What's your last alarm? What time is your last alarm? It's oh like my god, it's like No, this yeah, this is for every day. So the last alarm is like three twenty. It says we Yes, go it. home. Yeah. I need an alarm for that. Yeah. Let's see. We said alarm. UF, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm okay. I'm a um Quick question: yeah. Should should um should I base it off like you know I got a reading like they have step levels? Yeah, so like trends, so like bucket them like in trends. So like, who are the scholars that are constantly finished first and that are accurate okay. in UF? So I have the list up here, and then you kind of want to do it like that, like I said, because those are the kids that you want to make sure that you set up, and they have a forward looking expectation of what you're expecting what you're doing today but also like what are you expecting each day because god forbid tuesday you're in you're back in a group they've done what you've asked for that day oh but i've already met with mr portis he told me what we're gonna be doing each day so i can start working on what i'm doing for tomorrow mm -hmm. kind of thing or i can go back and revise this because i know that's what he's going to be looking for so should i start i start with my high group right? yep I'm a, I got like I might have like two high groups in UF. Okay. And I want to split it because I know like Miles and Brylin kind of like fight for attention, and it's cool like because they they real close, they're you know. Yeah, they are. <laughs> so I'm gonna um, split them. I'll put uh, Brylin on Tuesday. Miles on Monday. Uh, Aubrey Miles. 
And then also like another thing to think about, right? So like you could do all the high kids on one day or you can make them like mixed groups, right? You can have a little bit of high, a little medium, little so they could hear each oh, other so they could do peer feedback. And I mean, there's so many different ways. That is a great idea, actually. And you can, I mean, you probably start, yeah, we could still, we could still do that. No, so we could add in some scholars that could use a, l a little bit more support from Aubrey and Miles. Jacob. And just hearing other exemplary scholar work is also going to inform them without you explicitly saying so. They're going to be able to make that conclusion on their own. Like, oh, I'm hearing the feedback that he's giving to her. I haven't even done that. So let me go ahead and do that. So that, that yeah, yep. so that they could be on point. Um, Jacob. Uh, I'm putting a shot with um, Brown's group. And then just think about like the impact it would have. Like you have five kids at your table. There's only about other fifteen or so kids that are working quietly. Like very minimum disruption. Yeah, Ashley. I know in this group I'm gonna put Zoe. Those are the two low ones. Then I'm going to put um, Taryn. Yeah, I actually think I like, I prefer it this way. And then again, this is setting them up for success for next year because they they start right with conferencing in third and fourth grade, and that just becomes like a norm, and they expect them getting that feedback for them. So I got my first two days. Let's get Wednesday now. Madison Law. And even for like the rest of this week, because what's it today, Wednesday? Mm -hmm. I mean, you have t class this afternoon. Yeah. If you want to just like let them know, like, hey guys, today, and you could just practice with a few kids today. Like, for today, we're going to practice me pulling small groups at the back. When we get back from break, this is going to happen every single day. And now I just want you guys to prepare Time for that. To roll it out. Yep. <laughs> and how many kids are in here? Oh, perfect. 25. That's perfect. Back is a day, exactly. Oh, uh, what about Friday? Because every Friday we don't. Oh, yeah, we do. We do. We still So we right. do. And like I said, like, so when we'll meet on Tuesday, so we'll go, when we meet next week, we're always looking a, a couple weeks ahead and we can adjust because we will have passion classes and we have a field lesson, things like that. We'll make those adjustments. Okay. Um, there's some long princess, Angie. And then especially like when there are days that we have like reteach lessons, like you could totally maximize yeah, that I whole period. Yep, mm -hmm. and they could see a multiple of groups. Can I uh Yeah. You trying to make it bigger? Let me score down, yeah. This is just UF right here, right? Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> and then once you do Thursday and Friday, I just want to hear, you know, what you would say to kind of roll this out or set scholars up for success um, in regards to how you're going to roll out their coding system. Because that's something you could definitely do this afternoon. Even if you don't have, like, charts, I can quickly make, like, a little picture. We could send that up until the bonders make the anchor charts. Um, just hear what that might sound like and then hear how you would introduce this to scholars. Okay. Oh, yes, you look great. Leah was on it yesterday. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't get her. yeah, she she's like she's 
she always wants me to uh, give her like the most attention. <laughs> Group. So I'm gonna put Javaris on the last group, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna have him in. Yep. Yep. Mr. Houston. Essence. Okay. I'm trying to find who I, <laughs> I know. That's what I probably have like cross and all thing. I could not do that with my. See, I have three things. You want me to call them off to see? Yeah, I know I got to be three more people. All right. Um, let's see. Aubrey. Donna. Kanaya. Donna. Britt. Donna. Aya. Donna. Uh, Nishad. Donna. D'Angelo. Yep. Miles. Miles. Z Zanaya. Mm -hmm. Alea. Everyone's gonna get my attention on this specific day for this amount of minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, is that everybody? No, we have two more. Let's see. Uh, Kaylee. Mm -hmm. Yep, I need to add her. I just want more. Jacob. Got him. Amari. Yep. Brylin. Mm hmm. Essence. Essence. Yep. Gabrielle. Yay! Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. All right, so I'm gonna give you a couple seconds. So this is awesome. We're good for the week, and then you do the same exact activity with VEU. So now I want you to just type their names in that way. Yeah, I'm gonna send to you uh, via uh, email. Um, so now take a minute, think about what we talked about um, about how we're gonna introduce the coding system, and I just want to kind of hear what it will sound like um, when you're delivering that to scholars for the first time. Um, I'll probably be like, um... And including, like, the... So, two things, all right? So, name what the symbols are, name why you're doing it, and how it'll help them. Yep, take a few minutes up, he said. What? What will the codes be used for? Why?
time. So I would come in, I'll say, good evening, scholars. Of course, they respond, say good evening. Then I would say, today we're going to roll out a new way of um, promoting you guys to be more successful in writing. Um, there's going to be symbols, and there's also going to be a tracker. So who's ready to hear the symbols? Of course, yeah, they're going to respond. I'm going to say, our symbols are going to be different for each um, class. So in UF, if you are doing well in your work, I'm going to let I'm going to put a UF near your um, name, and that shows that your work is college bound. That shows that you're doing um, an excellent job, and I'm just going to encourage you to keep working towards it because you're on the right track. Um, for scholars who need a little bit more help, I'm going to put the um, a growth symbol. This growth symbol is going to look like a tree branch with no leaves. Um, as you continue to work harder, the leaves will grow on it, and this is just going to push you and encourage you to work towards that. Um, why am I doing this? I'm doing this to compliment the scholars who are doing well so far and encourage others to keep pushing. And what are you doing? You're giving them immediate what? Um, immediate feedback. Yes. Immediate feedback. Immediate feedback to compliment scholars or encourage you to keep pushing. And how I will have a tracker and my pen. I'll do laps, um, and I will set a timer. Yes. To remind myself and scholars of where they are and where they need to be. Yes. Well, that sounds excellent. Um. I really think they're going to enjoy, and I think they're going to be at first, probably expect a level of excitement and like mummerings when you come in around doing the check, but mm -hmm. as they get used to it, they'll, um, they'll get used to seeing you. And I love the part that you added. When you do your second lap, like if you add a leaf, it's like, oh, I see that you're growing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and even on that second lap, if it's something different, maybe on my first lap I had the grow tree, but that second lap I did it, like I can get that stamp of approval right then. So mm -hmm. it doesn't mean, oh, you're gonna stay in this bucket for this whole time. No, this is just for this five minutes of whatever whatever timestamp that you allot it for that. Um, but I think this is gonna have a positive impact on scholar work and then just encouraging them to do their best and that you are looking and inspecting what you're expecting them to do, which is always the key, right? Holding them accountable. You say one thing, I'm looking for this one thing as well. Yeah. Um, how does this feel? I'm actually excited to do it. Um, I am, for real, because like they get their special attention with this and then with this track i had a other tracker where i just like put like what we're learning mm -hmm. for the day yeah no like, that's keep that's good objective to I, like, see who's I on think track. this one right here is like that one i was just marking on myself like they couldn't see what was going on but with this one you know i could put it on that paper as well as exactly my tracker, it's like so. a two-way mirror everybody knows what that is and it's something that they were able to it's sticky for them it's yeah. nothing too obscure um i think they're definitely going to level up for you and it's not the, the, the um, symbols aren't too difficult to draw. No, it's, my stars. it's like, uh, this don't really look like that. What is that? Um, so, obviously, when I come in, I'm always just giving you real-time feedback. We're very yeah. comfortable with that, so I don't think that'll be an issue. But um, next week, we are on break, so when we come back, I'll probably come in and observe. Um, he's specifically for this action, so I'll probably come in towards the end of your model as you're releasing scholars to see exactly how this levels up um, for you. Um, E next Tuesday or next Wednesday? Just whatever is comfortable for you. Let's do let's do Tuesday. That would be the twenty sixth. I'll come to UF and then I'll switch to focus and I'll come see, see you with you. your homeroom as well. Okay. I will upload and I'll share all this feedback um, with you via email and then I will also in the email attach the um the tracker. That's okay. it. Super easy. Change the dates. That's it. Um. And also have one for Dunk too, so I'll sit down and talk with him. But if you front load it, you explain to him all of this, I'll come behind and be like, here you go. And then you can give him his blank number too. <laughs> no problem. No problem. I'll try to catch him. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time today, sir. Hope thank you found you. this meeting, you know, successful, some positive outcomes. I'm excited to see how scholars react and um, what this will look like by the end of the module. I think it's going, I think it's going to be real good, especially, um, that uh, like kind of like the guided reading for the guided writing. I really uh, like that idea. Just marriage, and we see the gains that we get when we do our small group guided reading. So it's the same gains, but now we're gonna see that in writing now. Because a lot of them, like 
My fault. I'm sorry. They, uh, they just need help with certain, um, like, Arby's, she's pretty strong. You mm -hmm. know? So I don't got to give her a whole lot of feedback. just probably, like, spelling. Right? Yep. And that's going to help her with her vocabulary. Exactly. But, like, scholars like Jacob, who, like, really need help with the structure, that's going to help him um, just knowing how to write sentences, period. And y'all have eyes on that every single week, so you'll be able to see those gains on a consistent basis. And not and just on, on demand. Yep. And, I, and then I know you're spinning it the way that he will feel like this is a privilege and not like a punishment, right? Yeah. It's all in how we deliver it to kids to see how they would take it.